In this short video, we'll help you work out whether you'll need UK planning permission for your garden building. Planning permission, and whether it can be avoided, is often the first question that comes up when people consider a garden building. Planning permission is usually required to build something new, make a major change to a building, or change the use of a building. But for a garden building project, planning permission can be avoided as long as your project qualifies as permitted development. Permitted development was introduced in 2008 to make some additions to your home easier by exempting them from planning permission. There are strict rules about what qualifies as permitted development and you must comply with all of them to qualify. Permitted development applies throughout the United Kingdom. There are some small differences to the rules between England, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales. We'll cover the rules for England and tell you how to find out the differences later. In this video, we're going to cover five factors that determine whether your garden building project can qualify as permitted development. Whether you qualify is determined by the type of property you live in, the kind of area you live in, how much of your garden will be taken up, where on the plot your building will be, and the height of the building and its distance to the boundary. A garden building can be a permitted development if it is built within the grounds of a house, but not within the grounds of a flat, a maisonette, a mobile home or commercial property. For these, you will need planning permission. To qualify for permitted development, you must not be in a conservation area, an area of outstanding natural beauty, a national park, the Norfolk Broads, a World Heritage Site or a listed building. If you do live within any of these, it may still be possible to have a garden building, but you will need planning permission. Nothing that is added beyond the front elevation of a house can be permitted development, you can only build there with planning permission. And to qualify for permitted development, your garden building and any other additions must take up less than 50% of the space around the main house. What qualifies as the main house is what was there in 1948 if it was built before then, or what was there when it was new if it was built since. To qualify for permitted development, your garden building must be single storey and meet strict height restrictions. The eaves of your garden building cannot be higher than 2.5 metres. If it has a traditional double pitched roof, it cannot be higher than 4 metres. And if you have another kind of roof, say a flat roof or single pitched roof as shown here, it cannot be higher than 3 metres. If you want to build above these heights, you need to apply for planning permission. And there's one more restriction that applies if the total height of your building is over 2.5 metres, which is that the building must be at least 2 metres from the boundaries. So if you want to build closer to the boundary, your building must be no more than 2.5 metres high to qualify for permitted development. A final point to check is whether your local authority has applied for any Article 4 directions in your area. Article 4 directions are a way that local authorities can add restrictions to planning requirements and create exceptions to permitted development. Not all authorities use them, many of them are applied in conservation areas but it's always worth checking your local authority's website. If you're in Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland, there are some slight variations to these rules. You can check on the relevant planning website. The addresses are contained in our free ebook available on our website. If you'd prefer to avoid planning permission, it's best to buy a building designed with permitted development in mind. That way you're sure to be within the size and height limitations. On the other hand, if you found through watching this video, that you will need planning permission, don't give up on your project, take some advice. It's still perfectly possible to apply for and receive planning permission for many garden building projects. If you'd like some free advice, you can get in touch using the contact form on our website. You'll find it further down the page. And if you found this information useful, more common questions and answers about garden buildings are contained in our free ebook, which is also available on our website. It covers planning permission, building regulations, foundations, insulation, the lifespan of garden buildings and their long-term value. If you download it now, you can find out whether a garden studio is the best solution to your family's needs for more space at home.